Hello audience, welcome back. Cheers. <sighs> My favorite green tea, as always. Uh, but today I want to talk about, expand a little bit more on what I said about karmic lessons and healing in, the, in, a, in another video that um, that we tend to grab hold onto the concept and then act upon it um, intentionally in which brings us to another cycle it's a bit of a trap you see it's quite slippery because even though you can call this experience in life and evolution of your soul and growth healing you know or karmic lessons but when you take when you take that as an intentional purpose of being here you create that as an intentional purpose here intentional purpose what you what you hear is not uh, you know ah, I just don't like completely I in sort of like abolishing this idea that uh, traumas exist and that uh, healing is a is a is a is a thing. I I think it's much more simple than that. I think we come here to have an experience. There's certain types of distortions that we have, uh, which creates challenges in order for us to fuse these distortions back into perfection and this is why you know there's the split at the beginning of the game you have a perfect version of you and then you have the imperfect version of you and the game is to merge those two together right and uh and on the way there we kind of get stuck get stuck in these belief system cycles and this is why I want to kind of abolish this belief in a trauma and belief in healing because we just uh, reinforce that belief and reinforce the suffering where there shouldn't be, you know. And uh, I say that if you can't take a little bit of pain, which life obviously contains, um, or for that matter if you can't take pleasure if you can't take pleasure or pain in this life then you're bound to suffer because what's in between pleasure and pain if you ever sense something like that what is in between pleasure and pain uh, the answer to that question is bliss or ecstasy that's what's in between you see and when we live a life that is sort of uh, if we live life that is always about one or the other then you always run away from pain and seek the pleasure right so you get into that cycle and the same thing about the healing too you want the healing which is a little uh, pacifier or a pleasure a pleasure of healing not to face of what's there you see and this is how it's the same cycle and it's important for us to understand that there is this cycle that is basically the incorrect direction of life and that it's to do with those distortions that we have and it turns into the addictions and the, what's like a addiction to healing right uh, addiction to learning karmic lessons or whatever these are all still still same field of being is to still still moving towards the split towards good bad pleasure pain kind of thing I'm sorry about the lighting keeps changing ironically into the dark and to the light <laughs> but um, it is very important to understand 
I really like everything to put to be put in the most easy understand best understandable uh, way, right? It's a very categorical, but it also gives us clarity, you know. And you can ask yourself, well, if I have this belief, right, and if there's something that is uncomfortable inside of me, and I actively engage into something to fix that what am I in a in a cycle of suffering and the answer is yes my dear friends the answer is yes then you can also say well, what do I do um, do I just not fix anything that is happening inside of me emotionally energetically and the answer is yes you don't fix anything you experience it and the more you can you can use the words surrender or courage which is basically the two faculties that uh, we all have and those two faculties are not to do with the mind okay it's very important to differentiate those because every time you use the courage you go against the beliefs of the mind every time you use surrender you go against the beliefs of the mind okay so that's why surrendering is letting go of some sort of belief uh, or just simply surrendering to what is and if it's like some sort of emotion that is powerful strong and we don't want to face it you're surrendering to that just letting it be and not resisting it that would be a surrender okay and uh, mind doesn't want that mind fights it fights mind fights it's like no I'm not going to send this or whatever that feels bad you know but only the mind labels it bad there is nothing intrinsically bad or painful even everything's intrinsically is the mixture of pain and pleasure which is bliss and uh, everything intrinsically doesn't even have a meaning it's just streams of sensations um, that appears to have some sort of order but it's more like a kale kaleidoscope um, and uh, all of these sensations are stemming from one big one sensation you know and then there's a sensation of touch the smell this you know the emotion energy energy all, all of these sensations that are happening intrinsically without the mind they're just pure bliss like uh, that's why it's a type of baby innocent view of the world where there's no uh, discrepancy everything is uh, experienced as bliss then of course there's uh, different flavors of bliss because if you're experiencing bliss you know like there is not just of course there is one pure bliss <laughs> uh, from which uh, many different flavors stem and so they say that there are 12 fruits of life you know and uh, uh, there's 12 states of consciousness that are blissful and uh, that includes joy the uh, you know the real original joy love um, um, ecstasy and there's many others I don't want to get into this too much because I'm already at uh, almost at 10 minutes but the message that I'm trying to send is that there is a right direction of life and then there's a wrong direction of life that's it that's it and then if you go in the wrong direction of light you so it's a, so they say you are in a karmic cycle okay if you go in the right direction of life then you are on a dharmic journey it's not a cycle because every time there is something to be faced and every time you something that is faced you are basically introducing a new mind to your old mind you basically the old mind disappears a new mind comes on and so that's why you are 
people call it a shift in realities, right? But you're essentially or skipping or shifting to different timelines, okay? And so it appears that uh, we start off with something that is not an ideal timeline with the idea to, to move closer and closer to the ideal timeline if you want to look at it that way. Um, there's many you see there's many ways to to say this there's many there's so many uh and they're all metaphors uh like a you know the, the christian and religious way you would be like you know fighting your demons kind of thing right or overcoming your demons and then the states of consciousness would be the archangels right and from the scientific point of view it would be just like states of consciousness right and um um, you can call them negative emotions, right? Beliefs, and so on and so on. There's many ways of looking. If you want to look at the simulation matrix way, then you, you add all sorts of other term, terms like shifting to different timelines. Pick, your, pick the one that you like. It doesn't matter. That's just the shell of it all. Um, I personally really like the, uh, you know, the simulation uh, metaphors. But uh, I can understand multiple views that they're talking about the exact same thing, right? And that's what I'm interested in, in, in something that uh, we all share. There's, there's, there's consciousness that we all share. And then, of course, there's uh, individual ones that we all have uniqueness about it, right? And um, the moral of the story is... That essentially there are soul desires or the ego tantrums and that's another way of saying uh, you see everything boils down to the simplicity of this um, the direction your life direction could be moving towards the source or away from the source moving more into the duality and moving closer into the infinity Right, and um, and the point of life is fulfilling your desires, not healing, not uh, learning karmic lessons or whatever. No, you came here to have fun, and then you have you experience something that you don't like. You find out what you do like. And you are out to experience what's it like to fulfill your desires. Okay? And that's it. That's pretty much it. Then you can say, well, if I'm just going to fulfill my desires, I'm just going to get into hedonistic stuff. And, you know, and if I have a lot of money and power, I'm going to get perverted, you know, and stuff like that. Well, the perversion is type of uh, ego because... When you have, when you want the material world, and you, there's time for you to look within the sensations that you have with inside of you. You can look within and discover the the states behind those sensations. Right? It may open up the worlds beyond this world. Right? And um, and open to a new levels where there's a lot more to fulfill and uh, this is this this way you continue fulfilling your soul desires and not getting stuck in the ego tantrum because when you have a, a lot of money a lot of power and you start acting all perverted it's only because um, there's direction there's no direction that is going within right you're still going because you see like if you're in a cycle and say well I experienced this and so now um, I, I feel that need and I need to experience again. Feel that need and I need to experience again. There's no progression because you're just hitting the same pleasure button, you see. But if there is a uh, progression, if there is a flow, if there is life, if there is new worlds, you know, like if you, if you, you know, 
something new that's just opened up and it's like, oh my God, the whole new world's opened up now. What what am I going to do now? There's all sorts of things that I need to figure out what you want to experience then. And so it may not be uh, power that you want to or sort of like a, uh, hedonistic pleasures. You discover that you may want, uh, you, you first of all, you may even discover in the reality that such thing as love exists. And then you may want to explore that, what love is. In, uh, in, you know, in connections, relationships, stuff like that. You keep on going on your journey because you see there is a progression. But with ego tantrums, there is no progression. Um, that's the difference between a journey and a cycle. Uh, it's almost like the NPC and the actual real player, right? Um, another simulation metaphor. So, and wanting something like, okay, I want this and I want that. It doesn't matter. It can be superficial or profound and it doesn't really matter. But if you want some, some, some desire to, to be fulfilled and you're honest with what that soul desire is and you are um, working on fulfilling that, meaning that you already, first order of business is already fulfilled that within yourself, meaning that um, all the sensations that this experience will can possibly bring, you already have them. It's backwards. Instead of going and looking that, oh, that experience is going to bring me all the sensations, you flip it all around and you find those sensations that that experience will bring. And you already have those sensations that experience will bring. So, you know, you're not attached to the outcome anymore. And yet you can keep on dreaming about what you want to experience and, and taking actions about it and stuff like that. But you're not attached to the outcome. That's the soul desire. The ego tantrum is something that like um, you're attached to the outcome because holy shit, if I'm not going to give it, I'm going to feel bad. See, that's ego tantrum. And um, it's important to differentiate those two and uh, because ego is something that happens when you are not fulfilling your desires then you have the ego tantrums you see um, but if you're fulfilling your desires then there is no ego tantrums and but you have to understand like what your soul wants and that's why direction has to be within it's like a breath you know you you breathe in and breathe out. You breathe in, breathe out. The breath of life. Uh, you can also say there's a seed of life, egg of life, flower of life, and then fruit of life, right? There's, there's the whole birth, you know, and fruiting, and then another seed, and it's the whole cycle. And that each single cycle is the fulfillment of your desire, fulfillment, fulfillment of the state. What kind of sensations I'm having, what kind of events are taking place, what kind of form is taking place, that would be... A fulfillment of your desire and that's all we're here to do and we've that's what we've always been doing and forever will do that's breath of life so might as well just you know yes this reality permits this free will of getting lost and and perhaps you know I honestly don't know if there is any kind of benefit on like for example if you already know how why you're here you already know like those desires that are being born in you and then fulfillment and stuff like that and if you're good at the game of life you're just fulfilling your desires there's no ego buildup you're always uh, when there is this need that comes up inside of you you are looking at it and finding what is this sensation that you're looking for and you find within yourself find within your soul that's the alchemical work and then once you already feel that sensation fuck it that feels amazing yeah and then you can imagine what form you would like to take to, for that to take place and then it's time to take action and you take action 
but at no point you already you uh, are you attached to the outcome because you have the sensation that contentment already you see how you live life you live life really in the opposite direction that most people live it's really like that it's not like oh um uh you know my life is this my or that person's life is that in that type of variety no the question is very simple which direction are you living your life and if you're not living in the, in the direction of your soul you live in the direction of your ego and that's suffering you know and um and there's a lot of things that are not clear in the ego there's uh, confusions and all sorts of nonsense that are there in that type of world but once you become like i like i always like the first domino effect and this is the same thing if you find out the 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 first thing the root of a tree that is going to grow then that's it so this is what i'm trying to pinpoint at the very very first thing that you ought to do and that is every time the emotion comes up that ne- that need or that emotion whatever stay with it and look and trust that you're going to find the satisfaction of this emotion that you're seeking for something okay and that brings me into what it takes for you to stay with it and then the word is a presence and the presence is not something difficult to experience actually like if you if you are interested i'd like to do more like ones on ones because i'm talking to you right now it's not very personal but i would like to see a person right in front of me and i would like to show how quickly and easily um you can move into the state of presence from which there's no experience of any kind of problem and with that state of presence any kind of emotion any kind of sensation is piece of piece of cake maybe even literally you see <laughs> and um and so you need that ingredient you can call it surrender as well let there's many different words but there is a type specific type of conscious action where your mind may be trying you know always hold on to this but go to the past go to the future whatever but if you can go and um we can remain what's in between of things mind cannot handle in between of things because it cannot compute the infinite and we fall through the crack into this space where it's just like whoa everything is still and silent and whatever the emotions desires that are here and now and that's still in silence are being fulfilled immediately and it's it's uh it's amaze balls now the other side of this being is becoming right because what is the ultimate soul desire first of all yes the ultimate soul desire is absolute peace and stillness that's the ultimate soul desire but that's just the half of the puzzle because there's something in between uh, uh, peace and thrill and then uh, that in between you can you can name it if you want to name it but but that's where it happens between the the being which is death just total stillness and the in life which is motion and when there is a motion in the non motion you have the sensation of contentment and becoming it's uh, it's a, it's a beautiful state to be and that's what the soul desires okay because soul doesn't desire just stillness and peace because that's death uh it desires to have that in the background in order to to deal with um, you know that's innocence right that everything is innocent from that point of view and so soul wants that because then nothing's kind of serious whatever's happening like the pain is not even a uh, uh, uncomfortable the negative emotion is not even uncomfortable because you have that shelter of in the infinite uh if you are religious you can call holy spirit what not if you have religious background um but that's what soul desires and that stuff is not something 
to accomplish with exercise in it is it's actually and the capacity to just to um, disengage the operations of the mind little by little and fall to the crack, crack into the void so to speak okay now that's just half of the game the other half of the game is become you still have desires and those desires must be fulfilled but you start from here you start from here okay and for example the other side of the I talked about uh, surrender the other side of it is courage you uh, basically may need courage to overcome certain things in order to fulfill desires why do you need courage is if the emotion is in you that is require something there's this need you know give me that give me that and if you focus on it with your courage and at the same time you have the surrender in the background you use them both and then, and then that sensation uh, that you know was kind of negative is being shifted into we call it positive but it's really neutral it's neither pain neither pleasure it's something in between and uh, it may be joy you know it like I said there's 12 different spices of this type of bliss and um, experiencing whatever is needed by your soul you see it's like the soul okay I want this state of consciousness and you cannot get it anywhere except from God so to speak or the infinite you cannot get it from anywhere but just the infinite infinite is basically uh, can change that negative state into contentment okay this is why if you most of the time you spend most of the time in the in the state of that infinite what's gonna happen is that you're automatically transmuting all your desires right Oh, but you also recognize that it's not just sitting in stillness it's having that stillness in motion at the same time okay and that's the first order of business um, in order to live a life in a right direction and if you do so if you get used to living life in the right direction which is more normally like backwards you see it's backwards it's like normally it's like there's a need and there's a drive and you go outside and you satisfy with some sort of outside external thing okay this is backwards this is there's a need inside of you you go in, inside you connect your soul to God so to speak again these are just words but it's basically connect the states of consciousness of lack with the state of consciousness of fulfillment using that stillness in the background and once you have that state of fulfillment then that's what really soul wanted the first thing that's what we wanted is that state of fulfillment and then the second thing the soul wants is to, to that fulfillment to take the form of something and then you can start imagining it's from that state of fulfillment you may imagine things that you want to experience give it give it the form you know and then it comes into fruition and so that's like one of the soul desires has been fulfilled okay and it's never-ending fulfillment of your desires this way you see and then you may be happy everything's going great and you and then there's another one that comes up okay hi there's a new desire that is being born let me fulfill that one too Shh, don't tell anyone though this, this is a little secret between us girls okay okay Sweet. Let me throw the key away. <laughs> <laughs> no but for real um, and that's the difference between the soul desire and the ego tantrum thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one peace